Okay, so I think, so we're live at this point, Aaron? We should be live, yeah. Okay, um, so nobody from the public yet at this point. But today is August 12, 2020. This is the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting. Um, and so just going down the agenda, first are comments from me, which are none, so that is quick. Uh, I believe that Dave is coming, so I assume he'll just be here in a few minutes. Uh, and he has some exciting news that I'm sure Aaron's excited about. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but until he gets, oh. <laughs> He's always right on the money. He is. So I guess for Dave to come, you have to say Dave's name. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Hi, Dave. Hello. So we were just getting started and we were just mentioning that you were on the docket and you had some exciting news. Well, let me, yeah, let me <laughs> hold, on. hold on that exciting news. Uh, maybe I'll, you know, build up the anticipation. Um, <laughs> was it shared already? It was not. Oh, okay. Then let me give you a couple of quick reports here and then uh, we can <laughs> turn it over to Aaron. Um, so yeah, just a couple of quick uh, updates for the commission. Um, we continue, the town continues to staff Buffers Pond uh, seven days a week. We're gonna try to do that uh, probably right through Labor Day. Um, my hope is to maybe go through the 15th of September. Um, we're utilizing staff from other departments that are underutilized during the COVID situation. We're using parking enforcement and all indications, I mean, all the feedback I've gotten up there has been very positive. Um, it provides a presence. Um, the parking has been excellent. There's been no days, as far as I know, where it's really gotten out of control this year. So um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but I think it's been a good experiment to have staff up there seven days a week. We continue to do the testing for E. coli every Monday. We get the, we get the results back from the um, wastewater treatment plant on Tuesday. And then we decide based on those numbers whether we need to post the uh, pond for no swimming or not. Uh, we've been in kind of a run here now of about three weeks where the water um, um, level, the E. coli levels have been well below um, uh, recommended levels. So we're in kind of a good place. Typically what happens is after a big flashy rain, then the E. coli level goes up when you get all that flushing, if you will, in the watershed. Um, we did have a little bit of a, a little a, a blip on the screen this week. Um, we did get some reports of some blue-green algae up at the pond this week. Um, we're in contact with the Department of Public Health. There is a, um, uh, what's it called, uh, cy uh, cyanobacteria, which is an aqua green uh, bacteria that occurs. In fact, Northampton has a couple of ponds that are closed because of it. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, as I said, I've been in touch with the uh, lead person for that particular bacteria at the, at the Department of Public Health, and he's kind of guiding us through this. We may end up closing the pond if that is determined to be a, a major factor up there. Um, we're also now testing the Fort River at Stanley Street. This is the so-called jump bridge at Wentworth Farm Conservation Area. Um, unfortunately, the levels of E. coli in the Fort River, given how low the, 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 um, the river is, the concentration, um, and the lack of flushing, if you will, of the watershed, um, those levels have been above reportable levels for three to four weeks running now. So we're advising people on our website and out at the out at Jump Bridge itself at Winworth Farm not to swim there. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm there, I will compliment Brad and Tyler out in the field. If you've been to Wentworth Farm lately, uh, they did replace the railings on the bridge there that were getting quite old and, uh, and worn and, um, and brittle. So uh, Jump Bridge looks really nice. They didn't do anything other than the railings and the, the side rails and the safety rails, but it looks, it looks very nice. Looks um, good. Yeah. Has anybody been out there? Yeah. Yeah. Good. And they cleared a lot too, which is really, which was great. Trails, in terms of trails, um, I think the the um, uh, the word of the day right now is is word of the day is really um, a storm damage from last week. I was away for a couple of days when that storm hit, but um, yeah, they will be cleaning up trails probably into October. 
uh, maybe beyond. We're getting reports every day of trees down, major trees, small trees. So Brad and Tyler have, have really been out there almost like tiger teams. Uh, they have two summer staff working with them and chainsaws, and they've been doing a good job, but there's a lot of big oaks, big maples that came down in that storm we had, uh, what was that last Monday or Tuesday? So um, they're doing more mowing. Um, you know, they're, they're getting to places we haven't mowed in a long time. I mentioned last time uh, Atkins Flats, which I think looks really, really great. Um, I will also say they mowed the trail in Bluebird Meadow uh, off of Southeast Street. And uh, just so happens the signs, the famous, now famous signs from Carol Gray are on the way. Uh, she's going to pick them up in New Jersey. Of course. Um, so we're going to store them at the old Hitchcock Center for a little bit. We'll take them out of their wrappings. We'll take a look. I, I want to make sure we, we install them in such a way that A, it makes sense, and B, they're not too permanent in that I would love to not pour concrete if we can help it. Let's put it that way. Um, I, I, I think they'll be substantial enough so they'll They'll, they'll set fine, but I really don't want to pour concrete. Uh, that seems very permanent to me. And, you know, signs get vandalized, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not wishing that on the signs, but things do, do happen out there. Yeah, Dave, I assume that it was Carol who put up the signs for Bluebird, Bluebird Meadow Trail. Um, you know, I think that was Brad, actually. They were temporary, right? They're very temporary. Yeah. They're like some laminated paper type things. Yeah, I think Brad put those up. He was so proud to finally get that trail mode that he put those up uh, just temporarily. Yeah. Um, Hickory Ridge, I have no new uh, uh, substantial news on that purchase, but I will say all indications are, I've been saying this for months, but they continue to be that we will buy Hickory Ridge this fall. So um, uh, stay tuned on that, but I, I think... Um, October is probably realistic. Um, and then finally, um, some very good news. Um, so in, the, in, in this year's budget starting July 1st, we were able to do some rearranging um, of some of the funding that comes to the Conservation Department. And it's resulted in, I think, three very important and, and positive things. So you may recall that Libby Lass used to work with us in conservation mm -hmm. and through some creative um, uh, approaches to staffing. And, and again, given COVID, we know that there's no more funding coming to conservation, but we wanted to keep conservation whole. So what I decided to do in, in, in a, what I think is gonna be a really strategic move for us is we are not gonna fill Libby Lass's old position, the administrative assistant position, uh, Aaron has picked up some of those responsibilities and we thank Aaron and Stephanie and others for, for picking up some of that. And then uh, Angela Mills up in the town manager's office will also help us. But what this allows us to do by not filling that position is redirect those funds and those hours to other staff. So the real exciting news is that uh, starting Monday, Aaron will be with us full time. So now uh, that is very exciting. Yeah, news. Aaron. She that's so amazing yes so she and i are full-time paid for your full-time job yes that's the point well, <laughs> very excited, uh, very before, excited. You get, before you get too excited uh this is not a full-time job for wetlands it is 20 hours a week in wetlands and the other remaining hours which are 17.5 for a 37 and a half hour week will be working closely with me with brad with you all on conservation priorities. So this is really going to give us a huge boost uh, working on agricultural licenses, land acquisition projects. I mean, Hickory Ridge is a great example. That is a massive project that I am going to need Aaron's help on and, and we're going to need Aaron's help on. But this is going to allow us to look at, um, um, you know, encroachments on conservation land more closely, work on our land management plans, um, I've got I've got Aaron planned out for the next three. <laughs> you know. yeah. But uh, we're really excited. She's done a lot of this work in other communities. So I, I think I share uh, my excitement with Aaron. Aaron, uh, you and I have been talking about this for a while. And I, I think it's going to be a great move for you. And, and we're happy to have you on board full time. Nice. Thank you so much. I'm beyond ecstatic about it. I'm just so happy. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Thank so you. We'll, we'll, manage uh, this, we'll manage this in such a way that when the wetland side of things, when there is a lot to do, we're not going to be counting hours. When there's a lot to do in wetlands, that'll naturally, you know, peak up. And then when there's a little low, obviously, Aaron may spend more than, you know, 17 and a half hours on other things. But that's just going to be, there'll be peaks and valleys throughout the, throughout the year. Um, what this also allows me to do is it allows me to um, uh, bring on uh, Tyler Pease uh, for an additional 10 hours out in the field. Oh, no way. Tyler's position has been 30 hours a week, and it'll now be 40. So that gives us even more uh, land management focus. Yeah, and that's then, nice because don't you usually, it's like usually like every two years you have to replace that position, right? So this is potentially, right. you could stay well, longer. We're hoping to really keep Tyler for, yeah. for the long haul. And right. then lastly, the, the, the third part of this is that um, in discussions with the town manager, uh, we've decided that uh, Brad and Tyler are gonna focus uh, specifically on conservation land and conservation trails. Uh, mm -hmm. Now for many years, we've been splitting them with the watershed lands and mm -hmm. it, it is absolutely impossible to get all of that work done. So um, they're going to be spending their respective 40 hours a week on conservation land, conservation trails, working closely with Aaron, with me, with you. So these three things combined are really, I think, going to uh, afford us the opportunity to, to really uh, work on that backlog of projects. And instead of being reactive, really be proactive and get out there in front and create those community gardens and get those agricultural licenses done, invite more community gardens on our land, uh, work with you all and, and myself on um, land management plans for all of our areas. So it's a real great opportunity. So, That's huge. Well yeah. done. That's really, yeah. really exciting. We're excited about it. So and You'll see. Yeah, that is great. And obviously people you'll and that you'll what well, the nice thing is you'll see results done on the land that everybody in town is going to notice and hopefully, you know, hopefully notice and be excited about. That's yeah. great. And, yeah. and I, I had shot Brett an email earlier and I think, you know, what's really kind of telling to me is in this COVID year, how many more hundreds, if not thousands of people are using our public land. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful thing, but it's also uh, many people have kind of, um, woken up and said, you know, people we never got out on the trails are now out there and they're giving us feedback. And frankly, not all of it is positive. They want, they want better bridges. They want uh, clearer trails. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. And frankly, I think people deserve it. So this is a way for us to, to provide them with some of those, you know, we want a world-class conservation program and a world-class uh, trail system in Amherst. That's our goal. So can we leave some with just log crossings and mud pits, though? Just a couple. <laughs> you want to get dirty? I, not a problem, but like you know, we don't want to get too manicured here. I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> believe me. Uh, yeah, believe me. Yeah. The bridges they build I, are too pretty. <laughs> no, I am. I am not for manicured, uh, nor am I for opening up all of our areas. I think leaving some of them just as they are and. If you want to bushwhack in some of these conservation areas, go for it. Um, there's ticks, there's poison ivy, there's stream crossings. We're, we're not going to make it all safe. You can't make nature safe and clean and, and, and neat and manicured. It's not our goal. So I like to hear, Dave. Thank you. So, Aaron, I don't know if you want to add anything before we, the commission moves on. Um, just I am really excited to get started on Monday and um, hopefully catch up a little bit on some of the backlog of stuff that I feel like I haven't been able to get to in the last few weeks because it's just been so incredibly busy. Um, and then really I'm just so excited to sink my teeth in and um, you know share the lessons I've learned from other communities and kind of adapt them to Amherst and what works for for Amherst specifically. And um, management of land is something I'm really passionate about. Mapping of land is something I'm really passionate about. So I'm just really excited to to dig in and and um, with the commission's help and with Dave's help and with Tyler and Brad's help to put some stuff together that's really gonna show the residents of the town that we are all working really hard to um, manage the land 
in a responsible, efficient, and and a way that they can enjoy it, you know, so. Right. Yeah, just for example, you know, all the down trees on the trails, you know, bring them to Wagner Wood and have them mellow up to make new bridges. <laughs> Sorry, we can have ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we have that. We have done that a couple of times, um, but right. we, we actually milled them. Can't remember. I think we milled them at Kitsa's on Route Nine. But Kitsa's. Ah, uh, I there. love that place. And they, yeah. uh, I got a bunch of stuff in my house from them. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I think what I heard Aaron saying is the first week or two or three, uh, I think we may be leaning toward the wetland side a little bit as you get caught up. But, but we'll get in a groove, and and it should be great. So thanks. Yes. Erin, I'm all like my area of love and passion is all about the trails and the like land management side. So if there's any way that you want to like I can help you, um, holler. Yeah, absolutely. And you know the the kind of uh, ebb and flow that I've noticed in other towns is wetlands work gets really intense spring summer and starts to peter out in the fall, and then in the fall things get quiet in wetlands, and that's really a excellent time to do some proactive management planning and um, so that's kind of what I see as being and I think the timing couldn't be better in terms of the change in the budget so that I can make that shift and start to really um, take a look at stuff and and start to get the ball rolling on the management end so I think it's it's going to really work out well. That's great. And yeah, impressive magic that you're working there, Dave. So well done. There, I, I will say there is, um, uh, for a long time, my responsibilities, and you all know this as assistant town manager, have pulled me farther and farther away from, you know, my my first love, which is which is the conservation lands and managing those. So there is there's something in this for me too, which is it gives uh, me the opportunity to work with Aaron, to work with have her work with you, work with me, and and pay more attention to these incredible, you know, over 2,000 acres of land that we have. So um, it's going to make me sleep a lot better at night knowing we're we're really focusing on these lands as we should. So excellent. Okay. Um, so Dave, do you have any other updates? I mean, there's certainly no bigger news, I assume, but that was impressive. Nope. I think we're we're all set. It's just uh, you'll see a lot of work going on out there. Brad and Tyler are already focusing solely on conservation lands, so that transition has already happened, and and uh, we're seeing that already out there. They're very responsive to a lot of these calls that are coming in from residents. So, so why don't we use that as a segue to an issue with conservation land? Um, and so, Aaron, can you set us up with? the complaint that we received for Harkness? Yes. Uh, let me just make sure I've got the right screen up that I'm sharing. While you're doing that, Aaron, I'll just, I will let you know that at your next meeting, there will be a proposal coming in for North Amherst from the Coles company. Um, I've been talking to their outreach person and they would like to, um, they would like to work with us to set up a story trail at the Mill River Conservation Area. Essentially, these are, you know, small posts that are put up on a, on the trail between Mill River Recreation Area and Buffers Pond. Mm -hmm. And um, they would have little slots for uh, a storybook to be installed. So the idea is for children and families to walk through the woods, read a page from story X and then go on to the next one and, and you'd read a page or two from the story and then you keep walking and it takes you through the forest and it might be any number of, of children's books. So we will in, we'll find a, a slot on your next agenda for uh, Hannah to come in and talk with you about that project. Excellent. They have those at Silvio Conti, right? They do, but I don't find them well maintained there. No, they're not. That I mean, that's my in my head. I was like, okay, mental note: make them better than those. But yeah, same so idea. We, so we have a complaint about conservation land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason the photos are are um, not opening. I think that they will come come along as a. I think it's just going to take a second for them to open. 
while we're speaking of complaints, Aaron, did you have any photos of the uh, of the um, hot tub that was left on conservation land? Ooh, hot tub? I didn't even know about that. Yeah, about a week or ten days ago, uh, somebody backed into one of our conservation areas off of uh, near Old Farm Road, and they they dumped an entire hot tub, intact hot tub, on uh, one of our trails. So. Rad and Tyler were right on it, and within four or five days, we headed out and to a to a reputable uh, um, uh, uh, hauler, and off it went. So that was a new one. Uh, <laughs> was a new one on me. Amazing. Amazing. I'm not sure what's going on. Why it's not letting me open the photos? Um, is Harkness Logtown Road? Is that the one? Harkness is uh, Harkness Brook is in Echo Hill. Um, you might have to just describe it, Aaron. What? what yeah. You, so I have them open on my screen. Do you want me to share? Sure, that'd be great. The photos, that'd be great. Okay. Do I need to stop sharing first? Nope. I think I just stole it. Okay. So, but. I'm not quite sure what you're seeing on my screen. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so what you're seeing is um, sort of to your right, you can see Harkness Brook, the actual stream bed, and what's happening. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of indicators out on this particular property that there's a lot of people that are looking for activities to do outside to stay busy, maybe. Um, and this was, I guess, a family that was out and back behind. Um, on this property and um, just sort of playing in the brook and taking the, the stones out of the brook and piling them on the side and making a little trail, makeshift trail with the cobbles from inside the stream bed, um, laying some logs that were down across the stream to make little like makeshift stream crossings. Um, there's also some spots where people were like painting on rocks and putting them in the stream bed or next to the stream bed. Um, and then a, an area adjacent to this where there was like almost what looked like the makings of a fire pit, um, a couple like upside down buckets in a circle. There was some trash there. It looked like, excuse me, like people had, you know, been maybe sitting there having snacks and like there was a bunch of dead wood getting piled up as if they were preparing to have a little, a little bonfire or something out there. Um, so we were contacted by a concerned resident in Echo Hill who'd been kind of witnessing this going on over a matter of a couple weeks. I went out with him and we hung some signs and I have lovely, you know, examples to share with you for whatever reason they they don't seem to be opening for me. Um, I'll see if I can get them to open again. Um, and um, so we posted some signs with some descriptions, just, um, oh, here we go. Let me see if I can um, share my screen again with you. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, this is, it's complicated because I'm going into my, <laughs> I'm remoted into my um, work computer for this. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but I, I created some signage and um, laminated the signs, kind of tried to make them bright. And we hung two of the signs. I left two with the resident, um, just in case any of them get ripped, one of them gets ripped down, he can hang them back up. Um, just trying to, deter people, I guess, and inform people that they're damaging the stream and damaging wildlife habitat potentially could cause storm damage in the future. And that what the work that's going on there is in violation and that uh, they could get in trouble for it. So just trying to kind of inform people, I guess, that what they're doing is not okay. Um, and we hung them in two conspicuous areas immediately adjacent to where this work is going on. The other thing I thought I should share with you, um, 
This was slightly more concerning to me. I mean, I know that that's not, it's not that it's not concerning, but there was an area right off the trail, a circular area where there had been these upside down black crosses painted on a circle of trees. And the gentleman who took me out here said that they had put like a, um, I'm not even sure what it's called, like some kind of a star in the middle of, um, the area like uh pentagram. Yeah. You're trying to tell pentagram. us a cult? Pentagram, yeah. I mean he said that this was done right after all of the you know rioting and stuff started and he didn't know if this was coincidental or if it was trying to send some kind of a message. Um either way it's really disconcerting to walk out in the woods and see this. Um so anyway I wanted to share it with you. This is um, up on top of the ridge away from where the other work was happening, but just kind of bizarre and um, yeah. not something I've ever seen before on conservation land. Erin, in terms of the signage, um, have you been back in touch with the resident who alerted you to it? Has there been any more work done or, or do you think the work has stopped in the stream bed? So, um, I only went out and hung the signs with him this past, I think it was this past Wednesday, and I haven't had a chance to check in with him since then. But um, I will probably follow up with him next week and just see if he's observed right. anything. So a couple of suggestions. I'm not sure if that was the only sign you put up, but one thing I would do in the future is make sure you kind of have the town emblem, the town seal on the sign. Okay. And also uh, leave some contact information for you if you didn't up there. So the sign should include, you know, your name or reference. I think you referenced the Conservation Commission, but I think mm -hmm. giving people an opportunity, a phone number and an email to get in touch with you if they have questions or follow up would be good. Okay. And then the other thing, I guess the question for the commission uh, is, you know, is this the type of situation where we should be returning that stream, uh, you know, undoing that work essentially. You know, should we be, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, permitting some sort of a, a modest restoration, moving that material, those cobbles back to the stream bed. Um, so I'll just put that out there. And that would be done by Brad and Tyler, I assume? Yeah, I mean, we would we would do it under under your direction and with with uh, Aaron's guidance, but it might be the type of thing that um, yeah, Brad and Tyler and the staff do, you know, in in the coming weeks or a month. Again, I'm not sure whether it would require a, a, a request or you know, I I want to make sure we don't get too complicated here, but. Returning cobbles to the stream doesn't seem terribly complicated to me. Yeah, and just restoring something that was already there. So it's not a, yeah, uh, intent. It's not intended as an alteration, mm. it's an alteration. Aaron, do you have thoughts on that? You've been out yeah. there, but I haven't. I mean, my first thought, honestly, is to issue an enforcement order because enforcement orders, you can require restoration as part of that. It's just, who do we issue it to? We're the right. landowner. And, you know, it kind of sends a counterintuitive message to, to everybody because it's not like the town committed a violation. So, but I feel like at the same time, it is a violation and it should be restored. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, the another option is we could file an RDA for it. Um, I just feel like it's uh, restoration work that was done in violation. And so um, it's just kind of what makes sense to me, but I don't know what others thoughts are on that. Hey, can we just go in and put the stones back? Same question. You know, I mean, I saw there was like a little pit dug and I don't know. I haven't been out there, but mm -hmm. I just say put the sign up. I like the idea of putting a sign up and then putting a phone number. That's probably true because maybe the people that did it might actually come forward. 
I yeah. don't know. I but know, we, but like, we're not going to enforce anything on them. So right. just putting the stones back and then and, and not worrying too much about it and just let nature take its course literally when the water starts coming back down. Yeah, I'm guessing it was like a family who has, you know, two 10 year olds and is losing their mind and needed something to do. I think that for me, it's more about like, let's get it back, put up a sign that's clear. Um, go from there. The only thing that I will, those painted rocks irk me to no end. Um, so just make sure we take those out before we let everything go back to the floor. <laughs> Unless it's better to keep them in. I could be wrong, but from everything I've read about those projects, it's better to take them out. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we're doing, we're not doing any more harm by restoring somehow. So I can't see how that would be, but. So if, if it's the commission's, you know, direction, I think we'd be happy to kind of slot that work into the fall work plan and try to get something in, you know, before the fall rains and in all likelihood, you know, the stream is going to do its thing in the fall and create new water courses and move things around. And obviously, we're not going to put things back in piles and try to spread things out as, as naturally as you can. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea. And another idea might be to issue a correspondence of some sort. Like, who, who are we issuing that to, Aaron? I don't, I'm not following <laughs> you. Well, just maybe a a statement from the conservation public statement to the from the Pub conservation commission that states this work was done unbeknownst to the town and conservation commission and the conservation commission is um comfortable with the stream being restored to its previous condition um couldn't that simply be in the minutes of tonight's meeting yeah i think that's fine because yeah, keep it simple kind of, yeah and I mean, this is also a pretty small thing that happened out there. I mean, if it was a larger alteration, I think it would be a different case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about what we would do if this was on, let's say, private land, I think we'd probably just have a conversation with them. I don't think it's reached the level of enforcement. Okay. Um, if it was a bigger alteration, I, I would go for enforcement, even on our own lands. But okay. it doesn't feel like it reached that threshold, at least okay. to me. I will also say, and, and this is a little different because they took the rocks out of the stream, but we have dams all over town in the Fort River, the Mill River, and the yeah. tributaries that people put up during the summer to hold back flow for swimming areas. I mean, even Jump Brook has one. Mm -hmm. And um, so it does happen. Yeah. You, that, oh, sorry. Uh, I noticed it in the Fort River out at Groff Park. Somebody had done that as well, put up a little stone dam in the river. Mm -hmm. One thing that's coming to mind is if it is um, a pattern and, and maybe we just don't know, or maybe this means it's not that this is the first one, but if it is a pattern, at some point it might be worth drafting some little sort of um, articles, too strong a word, but some little thing that we put in some of the papers that's saying the Conservation Commission is so excited that you're using our land, like please, this is a resource for you, here's how to use it respectfully. Um, and we put it in, you know, the Gazette and the Indy and like, just kind of to one get it out there of like hey we're really excited that this is an opportunity for you to use our to use conservation land keep your distance pick up after your dog and don't move stuff yeah don't touch anything right don't touch it <laughs> well, i wonder if there's yeah. also a way to harness the energy that they have and so you know moving stones not a great thing but maybe there's trail work or something else that you know those yeah. the four, the 10 year olds yeah. can do um yeah it, pull invasives pull poison ivy you know mm -hmm. let's do that yeah <laughs> Um, I was out at Fort River or uh, Amethyst Brook this morning and I noticed that on one of the upper bridges, pedestrian bridge, somebody had put a sign that's like, according to the Fish and Wildlife Service, like small stone dams can be barriers for fish, like please don't build dams in the river. Yeah. And I feel like I should tell you that those little stone dams don't really impact the fish. In fact, at low flow, it creates refugia for them. So, I mean, I, I, um, I would definitely be on the end of like a, a uh, not a super active approach to like removal of anything like that. I mean, Nothing. Like, yeah. Tell people Part of my job thing. is to put logs in brooks for brook I trout. know, right? Like that habitat <laughs> heterogeneity is really important for the fish. Um, so I, I feel like a, a lot of resources spent on this, maybe we, have, we should spend them elsewhere. Um, I think signage is a, and people to contact is a good idea. 
Yeah, this is probably a couple hours of work, I think, just to put it all back. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Okay, so Aaron, do you have enough direction on this one from us? Yes, yeah, I okay. think so, yep. Cool. Okay, so we do have a couple of people who joined us from the public at this point. Um, and so we're moving into the piece on Tofino, um, but uh, I apologize to people from the public if you are here for this one, uh, because Tofino is going to be continued. But um, before we actually do the continuation, um, Aaron, you wanted us to talk about a couple of things? Well, I just wanted to, um, I guess, reiterate that this is something I get contacted about probably three to five times a week um, in terms of other departments or members of the public reaching out asking questions on the status and I think there's a lot of fatigue going on um, in the neighborhood amongst abutters of what the status is and there's just frustration that they're not being responsive to what the commission's asking for and that one of the suggestions was that the commission set a deadline for the requested information. Um, and I know we had discussed that and that was something I was supposed to talk to Ted Parker about. I did reach out to him and leave him a message, but we were not able to connect to, to discuss either where he stands on his revisions or on, on the additional information requested or, you know, his thoughts on the deadline. I did spend some time over the last couple of weeks getting him some um, large scale plans. I worked with Beth Wilson to track down the large scale plans for him from the original approved plan because he was interested in those for the restoration area just because he's doing some follow up work um, to make sure the restoration area was completed. But um, but yeah, I, I just I feel a little at a at an impasse with it because I keep being asked, particularly, you know, Chris Brestrup, the town, the planning, I guess, planning director or town planner, she, she keeps um, inquiring because they're at an impasse on their end as well. And, and I think something needs to happen in the conservation arena in order for them to move forward. Hmm. Yeah, but... I mean, yeah, so we're at an impasse. I guess everybody's at an impasse yeah. because, yeah, they need to come back with additional information. They need to respond to our last set of queries. Um, and this has been going on for a long time at this point. I don't remember, yeah, yeah. since 10 9. Yeah, it was, it was October. I remember it was the, one of the first applications I got when I started. Mm hmm and as a, maybe in a side note, maybe to put it in the parking lot, this is the second time, I guess, this fiscal year that we've had the situation where an applicant is going bouncing back and forth between the planning board and the CONCOM. Um, and I'm thinking of the Southeast Street, I forget what the technique, what the actual name of it was, but the one behind um, Florence Savings Bank. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, seems like this happens and I'm not I'm confused they like wait for one of us to give and then they go to the other one well there's actually a lawsuit with the planning board um, because they refuse to release lots as building lots because of the condition of the road um, and so the planning board's really interested in knowing if these lots are going to be approved for development because there may be some link between development of these lots and completion of the road or if the lots aren't developed, then the road might not get completed. Kind of, there might be correlations there. So I think that's what the concern is. Um, I don't think, so ordinarily, a lot of commissions are very strict about actually hearing from an applicant before issuing a continuation. Some boards, if they hear nothing from an applicant, will literally just say, we're closing the public hearing. If this applicant wants to come back, they have to repost and re-notify abutters and start all over again. I'm not suggesting that we do that, but I do think that a, um, a note to Ted stating that we need an update on where things stand and um, that we'd like to, you know, get, get this get these orders resolved fairly promptly might be prudent. Yeah, or at least put it out there that, yeah, we might have to cancel at some point. I mean, I think it's 
yeah, unfair to the board. It's also very unfair to all the people from the public who have been trying to keep apprised of this. Um, and yeah, um, I mean, especially if he's not getting back to you, Aaron, with sort of general, yeah, with your inquiries. And so, yeah, I do see that there's somebody from the public with a comment. And so we'll go around the commission for a minute and then uh, uh, we definitely will give you a chance to um, add your comments as well. So Brett, can you bring that up? Can we, we, can we cancel this? Do you say cancel the, the application? No. Cancel no. isn't really the right word. What, 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 Aaron, do you want to walk? Yeah, so the board could just say, take no action at all. The board could say we're not continuing. Um, in order for this to be an active hearing, um, a legal hearing, we have to continue to a date and time certain. So we would actually have to continue to the next upcoming meeting or another upcoming meeting with the time and date. If we um, just didn't do that, they would have to start over. Um, so it's really at your discretion. Um, I think that in this case, it's it's a number of applications. And um, in fairness to the applicant, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily recommend that we do that. But I do think that it is fair to ask for when can we expect this information and maybe say we'd like it by X date, I think is very reasonable. And I think how it's been going at this time, I think it's also reasonable to have him on our next call to at least explain where they're at, and then we can talk through this and set a, set a deadline at that point. Aaron, if, if you'd like, why don't you and I try to call Ted next week? Um, I, I, I do have pretty good luck reaching Ted, so why don't you and I connect and let's, let's get some answers here. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the commission? So, and then I'll open up to the public. No. Okay, so uh, Rebecca, at this point, you should be able to speak. Oh. Hi, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, it's Mark and Rebecca Schneider. We're, one of, we're two of the abutters. Um, and we've been uh, at your meetings now for about a year, every single one. We, uh, it's must see TV for us every couple of weeks. <laughs> um, and so we are, um, we, you know, I'm glad that you guys are bringing up these questions that are on the screen because the truth of the matter is, as it gets continued and continued, I think there have been some confusions around the real issues here that, um, we, we learned the last time that the developer was on a call that there was really no way he admitted to being able to construct anything on these lots while also keeping to the rules of staying away from uh, a wetland. Um, so I know he's asking for an exemption and, and the truth of the matter is it shouldn't be conflated with the issue of he has also gone ahead and sued the entire development all of our neighbors in order to pay for the road that needs to be finished that he never finished. So it's sort of an amazing um, number of variables all coming together that, that he has sort of created. Uh, we are very concerned about this commission allowing for exemptions, having anything to do with the fact that then he then promises to finish the roads like he was supposed to. So. He's then gone ahead and sued us to be able to pay for that finishing of the roads because he's worried that these lots will not be able to be developed on. And it just gets very confusing. The truth of the matter is these lots shouldn't be developed on in our opinion because he can't fit them in while still maintaining the distance to a wetland. That's really the only issue uh, that I, I think that we should be considering. The fact that we've then been sued to, finish, to then de to become developers and finish a road that we had no, uh, no stake in is a separate matter. Um, so going back and forth between different commissions is a strategy that the developer is taking in order to confuse matters. And I just want us to bring, bring this back to uh, the issue at hand. And, and if we can, I, you know, as much as we love you guys and we feel like we've come to know you very well over the year, 
Uh, the truth is, it would be nice to take a little bit of a break from this commission. Um, okay. If we can set a date, not every two weeks, and hope that it gets canceled. If we can take a little bit of a summer break from all of you, with no offense, but it would be nice. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate the work that you're all doing, but I, I did want to sort of say some of that stuff, and I apologize for being long-winded. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And yeah, no, we fully appreciate that this is not how you want to be spending your every other Wednesday. Um, and yeah, those issues about the roads, those are issues, that's not our concern. I mean, our concerns are about the wetlands. And so that is always going to be first and forefront on our minds. Um, it gets a little bit complicated. Um, and, you know, we're going to get through all of the complicated issues, but the road is sort of a non-starter as far as I can tell with us. Yeah, we do tend to go back and forth with planning just because they need both of our approvals. But again, we have our mandates and we will stick to those mandates. Um, yeah, and I feel like we're getting dragged along just like you are. And we would like some closure on this. And so that, unfortunately, we are going to say, I think we're going to probably lean towards meeting with him in two weeks. Um, but, you know, that's going to be more to get a status update and figure out how we move this forward and bring closure. So it's about all I can say, Mark, but thank you for the comments. And so. Could I just state something too, just as a kind of to bring it back is that the, I think the commission is wanting to do what's right, but also recognizing that this could, what we need legal guidance from our town council, which we have sought out, um, but town council has indicated that they need additional information in order to properly guide us into the decision making process. So um, as this is a very complex issue and project and we want to make sure that we proceed in such a way that we're not only doing the right thing, but um, not setting setting up for a lot of litigation that in the end might result in wetland damage we want to do the absolute best thing we can um, for this so just to put that out there yeah okay so mark or rebecca do you have anything else you wanted to add no no okay so, thank you Okay, so um, at this point, yeah, so we have it back in front of us. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other comments, but I think at this point, you know, I'm leaning towards continuation for two weeks with a requirement that the applicant come before us in two weeks. Um, if he's not here, I'd say we do not continue. Um, but, you know, I think that he should be here in two weeks and we can talk about a path forward at that time. And so I'd like to know what status his status is, what his timeline is, um, that basic information. And so does somebody else have a better idea or a different idea? Okay, so I guess we're looking for a motion at this point then. If I could just recommend um, August 26th at 7.45 p.m. as a continuation time. I move to continue. Oh, I just forgot. You said it like two seconds ago, and I literally forgot. Move to continue to August 26th at 7:45 p.m. Correct. Yep. No one's gonna second. Start. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, we still need to do voice votes. So, Jen. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Roy. Aye. Anna? Aye. And me? Aye. So um, we are continuing all of the Tofinos until said date. So, yeah, and, and Rebecca and Mark, if anybody else is on, yeah, please get in touch with Aaron. Again, we are going to talk about this next time. Uh, we will, I'm, I wish I could say we're going to have closure. At least we're going to have a path forward at that point. Yeah, so, we don't have don't summer know, break yet. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe he will also come back with additional information. So it could be a more substantive call as well. Um, but Aaron will know um, beforehand if additional information is being submitted. So. Okay, so thank you. Um, so why don't we move on to our 735? Are we? Yeah, we're fine with that. 
Um, so this is a request for determination for a new well. Um, and so oh, I had my cheat sheet up here somewhere. That happened. Where'd it go? Okay. This meeting is being held as required by provisions chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protections of wetlands as most recently amended in the town of Amherst protection by law. This is for a new well, um, which is labeled as well number four for the town of Amherst. And so for those people who are here to talk about this, if you can raise your hand and we will make you a panelist. So I'm assuming that's why you are here, Beth. Welcome back, Beth. Um, I don't know if anybody else, if anybody else is here, just use that little raise hand feature. Okay, so if not, um, Beth, welcome back. And Beth, if you would like to introduce us to the project and um, give us a little background, please. Oh, and at this point, Beth, you are muted. Oh, no, you're good now. Okay, and can you see me or? We cannot see you, but we can hear you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here, wait, let's do this. Hey. Now we can see you. Hi. Hey, Beth. <laughs> Hello. Now you're on the um, other side of the table. I, I can see you guys are still having lots of fun. <laughs> Um, okay, um, yeah, this, this is an RDA for the installation of a replacement drinking water well for the town of Amherst. Um, Amherst has five groundwater source drinking water wells. This is well number four. It's uh, located off of Southeast Street in Lawrence Swamp. Um, I don't know how many of you have been out that way, but it's past baby carriage uh, water treatment plant, um, the ways out. Um, anyway, uh, so this well has been, well, the original well number four has been losing pumping capacity um, for a while. Uh, back in 2013, it was pumping at, what is it, 31.4 gallons per minute per foot. And in 2019, it was down to 5.1. Um, so back in 2019, they had it cleaned and redevelop, but it, it didn't make much of a difference. Um, it increased it a little bit, but I think it was still at about seven gallons per minute per foot. Um, so after uh, talking with DEP, the water department um, and consultant, um, the water department decided the best thing to do would be, and DEP decided that the best thing to do would be to put in a replacement well. Um, and so, yeah, so on the showing right there, the red dot is where the replacement well for is going to go. It's about 40 feet south of um, the existing well number four, which is inside that well house. Um, it's going to be about 55 feet from the wetland boundary. It's going to be 168 feet deep. Um, the upper casing is going to be 24 inches. So that's what in the end you'll see above ground, about a three foot tall casing that's 24 inch diameter, um, tapering down to an 18 inch diameter as it goes down uh, into the ground. Um, and what else do we, do we want to know about it? So right now there's a, a test well at the location, at this, at this location, we were required by DEP to put in a test well. Um, and I think Aaron has some pictures of that. That's a, a 12 inch casing on the ground. Um, and that, yep. So there you can see the location of the test well and that's where the, the new replacement well is gonna go also. Um, the same drilling company that did the test well is gonna do the final replacement well. Um, it's called Mahar Drilling. I think they're from Ayer, Massachusetts. Um, so to drill the new well, they basically back the drill rig up right here. You can see a picture. They'll, they'll back up to where that location is. Um, there's going to be erosion control along the 
30 foot line, even actually closer, it's going to start. If, if you look at the, can we bring up the site plan? The other one. There we go. So you can see on there, there's the, um, there's a wetland line, there's a 30 foot, a 50 foot, and a 100 foot. Um, so erosion control is going to come along the 30 foot. So it sort of starts right at the bottom right corner of the existing well house building. Um, comes to the south, and then it'll actually come even closer to where the well is going to be. Um, it's just going to come along the limit of work, and it's going to be a silt fence with uh, with hay bales. And so the drilling process will uh, produce cuttings, and and they'll, they're going to use water during the drilling process. A lot of the water goes into the drill hole and doesn't come back out, but there will be some. Um, I'll definitely be um, drilling cuttings, which when we did the test well is a lot of clay. It's clay down to about 75 feet, I think. Um, and just like with the test well, when the work's all done, the cuttings get taken off site. Uh, so the area will really get restored back to what it is right now, which is sort of like a gravel pad right there. Um, and then, in, so once the well is drilled, there's gonna be a pump test. Um, but then after that, there's a little more additional work. There's, there's going to be some water lines put in, so just some trenching. Um, I'll be trenching going to the west from the new well. And then you can see there's a line that's going to come off to the north, which is going to be a, a sample line, the first one. And then there's going to be a hydrant put in. And then just connection to the water main. There's a, a 12 inch, I think it is, water, water main that goes down the access road to take the water out to the treatment plant. Um, what else can I tell you? So the 48 hour pump test, um, we needed to put in a, a sedimentation basin and it had to be 400 feet from the existing well number four. So during that pump test, the water is going to be um, pump down the road through a, through a pipe to a sedimentation basin, which will be built. The uh, drilling company will build it out of you know, sort of concrete blocks within a plastic liner. Um, and it'll, it's there to co collect sediment, but the water that's coming up is, um, it's all groundwater. It's not going to have a lot of sediment in it. Uh, but they do need to pump for 48 hours to test the pumping capacity. And it's, you know, it's a sig significant amount of water, but there's really, it's going to be relatively clean water. Um, and we chose that area because it's, it's there are no wetlands nearby at all. Um, and as, as the sedimentation basin fills with water, there will be a, um, a discharge pipe coming out. And over time, they may alter where that dis discharge pipe outfalls over the 48 hours so that the water doesn't start to erode anything. But um, I walked the whole area around there and there's, there's, there were no wetlands within 100 to 200 feet of that sedimentation basin. Um, what else can I tell you? It, there's natural heritage um, mapped in a portion of the work site. And so the RDA was sent to Natural Heritage and we have a letter coming back that I think you, there's a copy of it with the RDA where there was, um, they considered it no impact. And I think that's about all I have. Yeah, that, that kind of tells the story. Do you have questions? Good. Thank you, Beth. And so, Aaron, do you have any more pictures or? Yes. Um, so this is the wetland that's immediately to the west, I believe, of um, where the site work is. Sorry, for some reason, all my photos got rotated.
Um, this is the wetland to the north, I believe, of where the site work is. This is a pretty significant distance away from where the work is, but we just walked the flagged wetland line. And this is the other end of that line. There's a flag there. And then this is the a photo of where the um, basin that um, Beth was describing would be located. Um, there's sort of a grassed swale along the existing access road in an upland area that is marked for that. Um, one question I had was, Beth, do you know the, um, I did send the uh, butter notification um, labels to the consultant that you guys had. I just didn't know if the um, return receipt cards had come through or. Um. Um, Tate and Howard emailed me one today. I can send it to you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you know, there weren't very many of butters. I can't remember how many were there were, but she she said it, there was at least one, so I can send you that. Maybe there was a couple others. Okay, great. Hey, Brett, I've got a couple of questions for Beth. Is this an okay time? Yep. Um, Beth. Hi, Beth. Um, Hi. A couple of questions. Looking at the site plan, number one, is there going to be a new building built around the new well? No, no, there's not. You'll just see the um, metal casing similar to the, the picture of that 12 inch one, but it'll be twice as big. No. And so everything will be underground. So the, the existing well, what happens to the existing well? Does it stay open or, or, or you just leave that building there and there's a connection between the new well and the old well? Um, yeah, uh, again, we had to talk with DEP about we're going to keep both of them. Um, the old well is going to be sort of an emergency well, mm -hmm. and they actually can't run at the same time just because they're considered sort of two sources. Mm -hmm. So that's why this one has its own connection to the main. Um, so mostly the replacement well is going to get run, but then what folks at the water department have said is that they will run the old one every now and then just to kind of keep it keep it active, but it's really just going to be an emergency well. Right. I guess my last question would be um, regarding natural heritage. I know they signed off on this, but did you find out what species, I guess my line of inquiry is really around wood turtles. And I know we've had wood turtles um, nesting on the access road to well number four mm -hmm. before, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so can can DPW, can you commit to some sort of a, a sweep? I'm just thinking of the well, you know, the well trucks and any other DPW trucks. I mean, somebody could easily just essentially run over a wood turtle, you know, out, out and about in this area when you do the work. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely something that, that we can do. Um, you know, we can, the day that the drillers are going to come out, especially with the big drill rig, um, we can sort of be in front of them and, and do like a, do a road sweep of the road. The drill rig would stay in place the whole time. Um, you know, they would be coming back and forth with, with pickup trucks. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if the commission's comfortable, I, I presume it's something you could do and, you know, it, it might be kind of doing it in the morning because, you know, the drill, the, the, the folks get there, whether it's DPW staff or construction staff or drillers, they get there in the morning at seven in the morning and, you know, Wood Turtle X is, you know, just popped out of the woods and, and somebody backs over, a, you know, a 40-year-old turtle or something female or whatever, so... Anyway, I, I just think it would be kind of a, a, a nice addition to this plan if the commission agrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good, Dave. So did you have other comments or questions, Dave? That's it for me, thanks. Okay. How about other commissioners? Any comments or questions? Yeah, Beth, could you just uh, describe to me again the, the, the sedimentation basin? So that gets pumped for 48 hours 
So it's just catching sediment and then that all that water is just being discharged out into the woods. Yeah, right. And, and then what are they doing with the sediment? Um, they'll, that'll go off site along with all the cutting Cuttings. from yeah. the, from the drilling. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And you feel that's a pretty good site. Uh, you said it's, it's away from all the wetlands and stuff like that. So that's. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's a perfect, it's a good spot for it. Um, cool. Discharge pipe off of it is going to probably be 25 feet. So it would gotcha. go into the woods there. And, and like I said, I, what I've heard them, we've been talking about that they would sort of move it during those 48 hours so that it doesn't really erode one area or just sort of completely pond one area. Um, they'll, they'll move it. Um, and there'll be somebody on site, of course, the entire 48 hours because they have to monitor the, the water level in the replacement well as it's being pumped. Right, right. And then, um, I'm sorry if you already, if already said this, but the, um, the new well location, will that be another gravel pad? Or is the gravel pad already existing? It's already existing. It is, yeah. okay. You don't have to put down any gravel. No more, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, hey, seeing that they're not doing any clearing, any additional clearing, I mean, obviously there will be some additional disturbance, but um, that's gonna be pretty minimal. So it doesn't seem like too big of a deal to me. So other commissioners? Yeah, I have a, so if, if the current well only produces seven gallons per minute, why do we think the replacement well will be more? I mean, do we have evidence that the current well is clogged, like the casing is jammed up? Or like, why do we think moving it over just a little bit is going to produce a better well? Um, yeah, no, what they think happened with um, the existing well number four is just that, that the, the screen but crunched a bit. So when they've gone in a few times, you know, they did it in 2019, they, they tried to redevelop it. And I think even 2015 or something had, had worked on it. You know, they, they really make efforts to clean and redevelop the wells. Um, and in 2019, after doing all that and the, everything was still so low and when they redevelop and they, they put this like, hammer thing down, they can tell it's rubbing on the um, on the screen, so the screen got scrunched, and so it's it's just not pulling in the water that it should be, and and the test well that's why we had to put the test well in, the one that's there, the twelve inch one. We did a yeah. test on that too, and it it had great capacity. And it did well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because my next question was going to be, are there any like. So the aquifer test or like the pumping test is 48 hours. If you're getting too much drawdown, like if it seems like the well isn't gonna perform, are there measures to make sure, you know, to like correct? Oh, sure. If it doesn't pass the, the pump test, then it fails, then we would have to start all over and try to find another location. But we're really hopeful just because the, the test well did so well. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's why, so that's why DEP, you know, requires a full 48 hour yeah. um, pump test. So that hopefully it'll pass and, and be good. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So, anything else, Jen, or? Oh, thanks. Oh, any other commissioner? Is there anybody from the public who has a comment on this one? You could just use the raise hand fig. Um, Teacher. Okay, um, so I'm not hearing anything. So I think we're ready for a motion. Um, so there are a couple of additional conditions that were raised and, but I think besides that, it's can, overall what I'm hearing is a negative determination. Um, so Aaron, can you just uh, rehash real quickly the conditions? Sure. So um, I heard a recommendation for road sweeps prior to the start of work for wood turtles. And I just wanted to clarify, I wasn't sure if that meant daily road sweeps or if just prior to the drill rig entering the site. I would argue for daily. Okay. I mean, a little truck can kill a wood turtle just as quickly as a big truck. Okay. Um, 
relocating the discharge pipe for the sediment basin uh, periodically to prevent scour. Spoils or cuttings from the drilling shall be removed off site and the site will be restored to its current condition. Yep, that sounds good. And I think, yeah, parts of that were already part of the application. So I think we're good. Yep. So um, this is just a straight up negative or is there a special number here, Erin? Um, I don't have the number right in front of me, but it would be a negative determination um, okay. work in the buffer zone with conditions and then a positive determination under the well or under the local wellness bylaw. It's the three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, looking for a motion at this point. All right, I'll um, make a motion that's um, that the well well number four replacement would be a negative determination number three with conditions and a positive determination under, under the uh, local wetlands bylaw. Second. Thank you. So looking for a vote at this point. And so Anna, you are top of the list right now. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Uh oh, my screen just got rearranged. Uh, Jen. Aye, sorry. <laughs> Leroy? Aye. So, and I. Uh oh. So, I think I got everyone there. So, okay. So, I think we're good with that, Beth. And uh, obviously, you and Aaron will be in touch. That's good. Thank you very much. Thanks, Beth. Thank good you. seeing you. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. How do I get off this thing? Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll take you off there. Just hit it a bunch of times. Okay, so uh, moving on to our 740 agenda item, and this is called, uh, another request for determination. Um, so this meeting is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131. Sec uh oh, my screen key. Um, I'm sorry. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in the Town of Amherst Wetlands Protection Bylaw. This is for 97 Holst Hill Road, and this is um, being presented by Cold Spring Environmental on behalf of Kim DeShields. So if you are here as part of this, if you can raise your hand, and I see you, Alan. Um, before we take testimony, I just wanted to state uh, for the record that um, I spoke with Larry Miller, who was mailing the abutter notices, and he did not get them out in time for this hearing. Uh, they went out on Friday. Uh, this was a last minute filing after the fact based on an emergency certification that was issued. So my recommendation to the board would be to um, to continue to the next meeting uh, to allow abutters to have comment. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and related to that, Aaron, should we hold off to, I mean, it's officially open now, so we're good with that, but should we take opening remarks from the applicant at this point, or should we, can we wait until next time? So I would say maybe pertaining to the emergency certification, we could, if you guys want to entertain ratification of the emergency certification, I would definitely support that. Um, but as far as considering the determination, the request for determination, I would definitely hold off until abutters have been notified for that. Okay. That sounds good. It makes sense. And so, Alan, um, do you want to give us, do you want to introduce yourself, introduce the project and give us a little background? Greetings. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little dark here, but I, I took a seat and things were nice and light and we kept going and going and here we are now in a wonderful twilight. Um, so can you hear me okay? You are good. Yes. Okay, great. So um, yeah, this is a simple septic system repair on 97 Holst Road. And, uh, you know, it, we did seek uh, emergency certification because of the need to move forward with the um, fact that the old system was in failure and, and, and Ed Smith and I from inspection services were in agreement. And I think Aaron was too that uh, the, you know, this had to be dealt with sooner rather than later. So given that we asked for, um, we were working on RDA and then asked for emergency cert also. Um, I wished I had known, this is the first I heard that he didn't get them out in time. 
I, I guess it happens. Um, my understanding was they were supposed to be out Friday, but that's neither here nor there. If it's not in time, it's not in time. Um, and, uh, um, you know, the work has begun in the last 24 to 48 hours. So fences up. I know Aaron visited the site. Um, we basically have a north sloping property on the south side of Hulst Road. And it is, there's only one place we can really get the septic in there. Oh, thank you for the photos. Um, and that is the excavator basically sitting right, uh, the, the leach field would be between the house and the excavator from where you're looking at right there. And uh, no closer to the road, the wetland is to the left of that photo beyond the trees in excess of 50 feet. And that's why we're asking for an RDA effectively negative when that comes to, to task um, uh, for the work only at any rate. Uh, getting back to this uh, construction, it is in excess of 50 feet in compliance with Title V, but it does certainly trigger your local bylaw, and it does certainly trigger an RDA for the work to be approved in addition to the emergency cert for the work to be done within 30 days. Um, there is a small BVW intermittent stream starting there as well to the left or to the east as we were. Um, to where that excavator was sitting. And um, that's really what we're talking about. There's also a small culvert on the west side, um, but uh, that goes under the road. And uh oh. Uh, I think we just lost Alan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So I could just jump in and say that um, Leroy and I walked uh, the site today. There was erosion controls up around the work area. Um, there was a, um, a filter fabric and also um, a uh, um, erosion control sock there. Um, there was very little in terms of tracking on the roadway. So they were keeping the site pretty clean, which was nice. Um, and uh, I would just recommend that the board ratify the enforce or the, excuse me the um, emergency certification that was issued so that the work um, is approved by you and then we could um, review the after the fact RDA at the next meeting. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, Alan's not back on yet, but so does any other, any commissioners have any comments or questions? I think that's a reasonable approach. Um, we have one person from the public still on here, uh, somebody who's calling in, so I'm not quite sure how they can, I don't know if they can raise their hand or what they can do, but okay. Um, so can we... Do we need to deal with the, I think we need to deal with the RDA first, continue that and then ratify, Erin? Sure, yep, that would be fine. Okay. Um, and so for the continuation date and time, I would recommend August 26th at 8 p.m. Looking for a continuation motion. I move to continue uh, this RDA to August 22nd at uh, 8 p.m. Second. Okay, so going around the horn, Jen. Hi. Fletcher. Hi. Uh, Anna. Hi. Leroy. Hi. And I from me as well. Okay, so we're good on that. And then the next piece we have is um, to ratify the emergency cert. So looking for a separate motion for that one. I move to ratify the emergency cert. Do I need to go more than that or? Um, it's for 97 Holst Road, but besides that, we are good. Right. Second. Okay, so going for a vote, Jen? Aye. <laughs> Fletcher? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Anna? Aye. And I for myself as well, so. Okay, so I think we are all set with this one. Anything else you need from this? need from us on this one, Aaron? Uh, no. Okay, so those are all of our 
um, official agenda items, but now there's mm -hmm. the other mm -hmm. stuff. So the emergency cert we dealt with. Um, so yes. do you just want to go down the list that is on the agenda, Erin? Um, if it's okay, I'll just jump into my report um, and I'll kind of burn through it as quickly as possible. Um, so just to let everybody know, I did issue determination for 227 Pomeroy, the order of resource area delineation for Shootsbury Road. Um, 152 Logtown Road, that's the, the permit that was floating around for signature. I think it was with Larry. Um, does anybody know the status of that? Okay, um, I'll have to bug Larry and find out what's going on with it. I really need it back. It's uh, long past due to issue, but I'll follow up with Larry on that. Um, so just to give you guys an, a couple a couple meaningful updates. Um, the first is I um, the building department put me in touch with uh, an, the owner of 30 Pally Place Circle. Um, who needs to file an RDA for a shed that's over 50 feet from a wetland. So they're actually exempt under the Wetland Protection Act, but um, they are jurisdictional under our local bylaw. So I'm working with the owner to file an RDA, a local jurisdictional RDA um, for that shed, but they, they, they had ordered the shed and asked to have it delivered, ordered it and arranged to have it delivered before they knew they needed a permit. So, um, it may be slightly after the fact, but I've spoken with him about mitigation and um, I'm going to be meeting with him on Tuesday to help him through the permitting process. So, um, uh, I also got a land use request for um, the use of conservation land um, and I wanted to um, oh, sorry, I somehow lost my place here. Uh, I wanted to run that by you guys. Um, and actually Dave as well, as long as he's on the call, this is um, basically a, um, a individual who would like to do um, an outdoor learning program for children. Um, on conservation land and um, this is basically I think in response to a lot of ch the child care dilemma that's going on right now with children not being able to um, be around other children and in a s classroom environment and so she's looking to do something um, in the outdoors to get children together. I'll give you guys a second to read this. I received it fairly recently. You're on mute, Dave. So she had specifically referenced the Hitchcock Center as being a possible site um, she was interested in. Yeah, this is the first I'm seeing of this. So I, my preference would be to kind of take it under advisement and come back with a recommendation at your next meeting. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, um, this came from Brad. I apologize, Dave. I thought you were copied on it, but um, I think that's good if you haven't seen this yet. I might have been copied, but to be honest, the volume of emails right now. Mm -hmm. coming yeah. out. Um, 
Understandable. The challenge for me is I'm kind of putting this in the context of what is the town allowing at recreation areas through LSSC, mm -hmm. et cetera. And the town as a whole has decided not to do outdoor camps. Um, not even, I don't think we're doing anything even with small groups. So I don't know, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to think through this a little bit and, and, and have some sort of a recommendation at your next meeting. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to put this person off, but there is, you know, the, there is also, I, I understand they have liability insurance, but the minute this is sanctioned by the commission, by the department, we own some of the liability for what happens in this in this uh, outdoor learning um, um, opportunity. So I'm also wondering whether, given where we are in the year, whether how pressing this is to do this fall, or do we wait and gather more information on COVID? And this is a possibility in the spring of 2021. So those are just my initial thoughts, having not seen this until a couple of minutes ago. So I understand it's outside and outside is is preferable to inside. I get that. This seems and, good. Yeah. And we want to try to encourage, obviously, we want to try to encourage, um, you know, more exploration outside and, and uh, creative learning and, and nature study. But anyway. This seems similar, or it's ringing a bell for me with what happened recently up at Chesterfield Gorge, um, where there was a summer camp and like it, it, they were out at the gorge using the space. Um, and they, that, I think it's the Army Corps that oversees that, said that they didn't want groups assembling there because of the town's current restrictions. Sorry, there's the dog on um, gatherings. And so, yeah, I, I agreed to take a little bit more time and look into what it means because I I don't know. I mean, I think because they asked us now we, we really have to do that kind of due diligence around it. Erin, could you send this? Has the has this been sent to the entire commission? And if not, could you send it to everybody and, and copy me and then you and I can talk about it between now and the next meeting and do a little more discussion next week when I see you? That sounds great. I'll do that. Yeah, I mean, a couple other questions that I have. I don't know if she talked, or this person, if they talked about um, numbers. So how many people would be there, including parents? So group size. So I don't know if they talked about parking. I don't know if they, there's some mention there about bathrooms. And so that'd be another fear. And um, I didn't see any mention, Grant, I just looked at it quickly, about inclusivity. So I don't know how much they're going to be charging. Will there be opportunities for right. people who can't afford that? Um, those types of pieces. And that's all on top of uh, the obvious COVID concerns. Yeah. And I think so it'd be nice to have this person, you know, be here next time and we could talk through it. It feels different to take a group to visit the conservation land versus saying that the conservation land is your home base and you're like, that's where you're based out of. Cause then it, yeah. Yeah, especially if they're going to be making money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have had groups like this in the past. It wasn't there like a Tinker Garden? We uh, did allow one, I think, in 18 or 19 at um, Amethyst Brook. But I know that, you know, the issue of restrooms always comes up, and that's that's a challenging one. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is absolutely no way that we can allow use of the, the old Hitchcock Center, I can tell you that. Um, from a code code standpoint, so. Yeah, and they were asking to use the bathrooms at Mill River, and I don't know what their status is. Uh, they're, op they're open. They're actually oh. open and cleaned regularly, and they'll be open probably until, I don't know, maybe October 15th or November 1st, so. Okay, well, let's let's uh, do a little more research on this and, and maybe invite them back in two weeks. Okay, sounds good. Um, so for monitoring reports, there's not a whole lot to report because it's been so dry, but um, I am going out to Forty University Drive next week to inspect final erosion control inspection. Hopefully they can come down and then that site is no longer needing to be monitored. Um, 
I also got two requests for certificates of compliance from Hickory Ridge. I thought Dave was copied on these as well, but I may have been mistaken on that. These are for, um, they were submitted by Tom Reedy um, on behalf of, um, I think it's Barry Roberts, um, or the former the former owner, but he's going through trying to clear the property for purchase, which is related to the town's purchase of the land. Um, so I haven't done any site visits relative to this um, project, but or relative to these projects, um, because they were relatively old. Um, projects that were done a while ago and I was unsure about um, you know entering the property at this time but um, I did ask them for I reviewed the orders and the conditions associated with the orders that were issued um, the only order that was really pertinent I felt like that would have required an ongoing condition was um, on, on either of the orders that were issued was that one of the orders um, required a um, uh, ma long-term maintenance log for the stormwater operation and maintenance plan. And um, w I requested a copy of the maintenance log um, basically to just confirm that the maintenance had been stormwater maintenance had been taken care of and this was the letter that I um, got in response to that was that all of the records have basically been removed from the facility but that they to the best of their knowledge they followed the operation and maintenance plan and never had any issues on the site so <clears throat> that's what I got in response to the request for an operation and maintenance log um, but other than that there was no ongoing conditions associated with the um, orders of conditions that were issued on the property. Um, one of them uh, filed 1998 it looks like and the other one was a little more current so Aaron, what, is there an action you're hoping the commission will take tonight or is this um, Well, there, there are requests for certificates of cl uh, compliance before the board. So I don't know if the board wants to entertain the requests or if we want, I mean, just kind of sharing um, the ongoing, the only ongoing condition was the maintenance condition. So, um, I mean, I don't have any objection to these being issued, the certificates of compliance, the work was completed on the sites, um, but. So you're looking for a vote on each of these, correct? If we're comfortable. Yes. Yeah, I mean, these seem like, I don't see any issues with these. I don't know if somebody else has, sees anything specific. Not looking for a motion for order of condition number one. So we should reference, let me, I'll just grab the um, DEP file numbers for these. Sorry, I'm switching between screens here. Um, and it's a little difficult to read. Aaron, that reminds me of with that previous image, you and I should talk about the crosses on the trees and we may just loop APD in on that and just have them take a look just, mm -hmm. just sure. So remind me about that and we'll we'll do that. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so I would request two separate motions um, for these since they're two separate um, certificates. Uh, one would be for DEP file number 89363. So I'm going to start with that one. And we just need a motion to issue a certificate of compliance. All right. I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for, uh, what's it, 823? Uh, 89363. Oh, I see. 
89363. Second. Okay, so voice vote on this. Jen? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Anna? Aye. Uh, and I. Oh, sorry, Leroy, I thought I heard an I there. So. Okay, so I think we are good on this one. So the next one, Erin? Um, the next one is DEP file number 89-582. 89582 for whoever's a taker. I'll make a motion. Of, uh, eight, sorry, you eight, started nine, out one. with so much confidence. <laughs> for what is it? 89 what? Is it right? 582. 582. 582. Oh, yeah, it is right in front of me. DEP file number. I got it. So looking for a second. Sorry, second. Second. Oh, Jen got it. There we go. Okay. So Anna? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Leroy? Aye. Jen? Aye. And I for this as well. So I think we're good on all of these, Aaron. Great. I will jump back. Okay. Um, oh, so just as an update, just as a FYI, um, this is very good news. Um, I've been meeting with and conversing with Eversource regarding the work that they're doing at the Podic substation and also the large transmission line structure replacement project that they're doing. And I believe that they have agreed to do all of the projects that we have asked of them. So the beaver removal, um, apodic, the, um, there would be a um, wetland mitigation project, which would probably be creation of some sort of uh, wetland basin, might have vernal pool characteristics on um, the podic property associated with that. Um, they would do all of the construction and stabilization of that. They just don't want to be responsible for long-term monitoring of it. Um, so they would ask the board to do that. But um, I believe they've also agreed to um, provide the poles for the crossing at Amethyst Brook. And they're doing some additional mitigation as well. So. Great. Great. Yeah. And what, they're going to, oh, go ahead. What's what? What do you um? The, what was the so you, they're going to do the fix the the culvert was a beaver beaver issue there. But what was the other thing they're going to make like a a wetland basin where and what for what? Well, so as part of the work that they're doing at the Podic substation, they're filling a small area of wetlands to put in right. an access road, and they've got nowhere to replicate wetlands on the yeah. site. And so one of the creative solutions that we had proposed is. In a, in a sort of exchange for them um, doing beaver removal at the Podic um, conservation area, that they would remove those beavers and then do a restoration on that property. Um, and we had discussed potentially doing a, a vernal pool, creation of like a vernal pool out there, um, because we know that it's in close proximity to Spadefoot toad habitat. Right and um, okay, that makes sense. yeah so that gotcha. we could kind of have like a little win-win situation with the beaver removal and some wetland creation um, and then um, hopefully also out on is it Pomeroy Court they'll be doing some beaver removal out on Pomeroy Court we've been having an ongoing beaver dam problem there and then the poles for Amethyst Brook, which we've had a very hard time getting and affording to, to deal with. So I think that they're going to be doing all those things. They've committed to doing all those things and they're going to be presenting it at the next meeting. So right. um, they just, I guess, I want to keep bringing it up to make sure that the commission's still on board and just knows this is coming down the line. Great job. Nice. Yeah, that all sounds great. Uh, I know that they were trying to get us the polls last a different time. So yeah, hopefully that comes right. through this time. Okay, great. Large poles. Um, I got a pond inspection report for this suing pond and I did not have a chance to look at it. Um, I don't know if anyone else is familiar with this. I wasn't sure if this was the violation site from last fall or if this was another pond, uh, but I 
we can bring it back up in the next meeting once I've had a chance to review it. I just was unfamiliar with it. Is this one off of Bay? Yeah, this is off of Bay Road. Um, uh, Thwain, this is this was a removal of cattails yeah. and then the cleaning of a um, of a basin of some sort. I can't I can't recall. There was like a flow structure basin there that uh, the commission permitted yep. the the removal of uh, built up sediment. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a pretty should be a pretty uh, substantial file on this with a notice of intent, Aaron. Yes, and I'll definitely track it down. It just came in in the last day or so. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was on the radar. Yeah, and for anybody who hikes up to the big water tower, uh, it's over on the left hand side. So I've seen it. It definitely looks a lot cleaner than it did. So they've done work. Uh, obviously, I can't go over there to, to look anymore in any detail. Um, really good news on Mountain View Circle. I've been in communication with Bob Predmore trying to shepherd this along a little bit. Um, I, I am going for a pre-construction meeting with them um, next Monday um, at 9.30 a.m. Um, Fish and Wildlife did approve the use of a turbidity curtain during low flow. So if he, one of the issues he was having was being able to afford the pump around system. So as long as he can finish by September 1st, they've approved the turbidity curtain. So they are planning to move forward, um, which is great news because yeah. that culvert is literally almost 90% blocked. It's really bad. Nice. Okay, so I'm trying to burn through the rest of these. Um, the comments... Oh, Aaron, can I yep. just ask you on that last one? Um, I know it's a very small area, but is that area um, uh, natural heritage? Is that um, box turtle habitat over there as well, near that gentleman off of Mountain View? You might just look at that. I think it might be, but I, I could, I don't know the maps, you know, off the top of my head, but just check it yeah, out. Yeah, I, I will check it out. Um, I know that there was a pretty extensive natural heritage um, list of requirements as far as time of year requirements and there was additional conditions associated with the approval mm -hmm. yeah. but i will definitely review that with bob sure. and i think i am going to uh say good night but thank you we'll see you in two weeks bye dave, bye, dave. Bye, dave. um so the Common School had a minor um, request for minor administrative change to their order of conditions. And um, luckily, this is actually a really simple and easy one, I think, for you guys to approve. They're basically just converting a small area um, of pavers to, or I'm sorry, of pavement to pervious pavers. Um, and that was a requirement to try to reduce impervious surface on the site. Um, they are also reducing the width of the driveway slightly. Um, so permeable paver fire access and drive, they're adding, eliminate, eliminating six parking spots along the driveway, um, six, 18 permeable paver parking areas, and then um, driveway to be paved asphalt. So th those are the only changes, um, basically um, removal of impervious and um, uh, um, additional, um, sorry, I lost you guys a little bit there. Um, removal of impervious in the form of asphalt and then creation of pervious paver um, in part of the asphalt that was previously approved. So hopefully uh, you guys are good with that. I figured it would <laughs> be an improvement over the previous plan. Yeah, those are all great improvements. Those are things that we talked about last time and so they just took into consideration. So I'm all for it. And yeah, I think as a administrative oh, change, it's fine. Okay. Anybody Excellent. else have any, anybody have any issues with that? Or? Well, much better. Um, would somebody mind making a motion just stating that the um, common school um, plan changes are a minor change to the order of conditions? Move that the common school changes are a minor change to the order of conditions. Second. Anna. Aye. 
Fletcher. Hi. Jen. Hi. Roy. Hi. And I for me. So next, Aaron. Perfect. Okay. Um, UMass repaving. So this is something I am a little less familiar with um, because I wasn't involved with the UMass, um, uh, I guess, blanket order of conditions that was issued. Um, but basically, um, UMass has come forward with um, a proposal to um, repave um, University Drive. And they're saying no proposed wetland impacts. Um, and th they're planning to do the work um, and follow all special conditions per the blanket order of conditions, DEP file number 89647. The work will begin summer or fall. Um, checking the wetland boundaries to make sure there was no expansion of the wetlands. Um, erosion controls are shown on the site plans, um, providing copies of the landscape plans to us. They'll notify the commission once erosion controls are installed. Uh, they already sent me paper copies which have been received in the office. So um, I am less familiar with the blanket notice of intent, but this sounds like it's just a um, notification based on a previous um, order of conditions that was already approved um, as part of a blanket, maybe maintenance um, order of conditions that was issued to, to UMass. And I can look more into that and pull it. I don't think there's any action that you guys would need to take on that. Um, it's more or less just an FYI that that is coming down the line. Uh, I don't think this is coming down the line, Aaron. I mean, they're hot and heavy with that right now, unless yeah. <laughs> they're talking about a different part of university. But I think most of university is ripped up at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, and, it's... you know, so there, that was a little weird with what Mickey was saying. Like, it sounded like he was saying it was going to happen in the future, but they're doing it now. And okay. um, there's also a difference in my mind between replacing existing, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But there are parts of it that I've noticed where I don't quite know what it is, if it's expansion or there's large dirt ramps going off of, ah, uh, so I guess the west side of university near Rocky Hill. What do you mean by dirt ramps, like going into, so on, on the road or off the road? Off the road. And so I don't know if you, if you remember that, if you know that area, Fletcher, so there's a deep, there's kind of a steep little bank there. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like a nice little um, natural area that's there, right across the street from rafters. Old yeah. Rafters. Um, I don't know what that ramp is for, what they're doing. They do have silt fence and other things up there that look good. Yeah. They actually have double barriers. They have um, a sock and then a fence. Hmm. I run by it every day, so I'm very familiar with it. All right. Yeah, yeah it looks I like they're replacing all the water lines and all that stuff, and there's I a lot of culvert, new water. What's well, that? water lines but something it struck New me as, sidewalks it struck me as being a very after the fact situation because um mickey had sent me an email saying hey we sent you the the maps for the repaving project down on university drive didn't didn't we and i'm like no i never got anything and then he sent them to me in the last like week or so um so yeah I don't know how you guys want to proceed with that or if you want me to request more information from Mickey as far as like if it, we're trying to ask questions, are they expanding impervious surface, um, things that, and I'll, t I'll pull the old permit and take a look and see what was approved. Yeah, I think it would be good to know. And I mean, especially in that little area, I don't know where the wetlands are. I think there's some wetlands that are back there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure okay. if it's delineated or not. So I think that'd be useful to know. Okay. And so, yeah, because I think the order for conditions is more for standard maintenance replacement. Meh, that's probably standard maintenance and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's expansion, that's something different. Yeah. I mean, at first blush, I'm not quite sure the area you're talking about, Brad, but it doesn't, definitely looks like replacement. But, yeah, most yeah. of it's replacement. It's just that there's this weird ramp. And I don't know mm -hmm. if that's just temporary or 
I don't know what the hell they're doing. It's a lot of dirt. It's not a minor thing. And they have like a little bobcat that they use to move stuff around. So. Well, I will, um, I will follow up with Mickey and relay these questions and um, we can talk about it under other business at the next, on the next call. But um, I cannot believe we got through all that <laughs> before nine o'clock. It's not even nine o'clock. So are we good, Aaron? That's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, as always. Yeah. Of course. Nice job. Right. So we're looking for one final motion. 40 hours. Watch yeah. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. Jen. Hi. Fletcher. Hi. Leroy. Hi. Anna. Hi. And I. So we are good and reporting 